Pub rock was a subgenre of rock music that came out of the United Kingdom in the mid 1970s and largely coincided with the Second British Invasion. The original had seen pop groups like the Beatles become big overseas, and the birth of pub rock saw British music get away from this poppy sound and back into the more natural and bluesy sound of musicians York. From Brinsley Schwartz to Dr. Feelgood, join Faxverse as we go over the best pub rock bands of the 70s. Brinsley Schwartz Brinsley Schwartz is one of the preeminent pub rock bands, and the story of how the band came to be parallels the story of how pub rock itself came to be. Shortly before it was a thing, Brinsley Schwartz was a band many people believed to be on the rise. Some of those people included a number of record execs who all believed they could shape the band into a successful product. Brinsley Schwartz represented an odd case of a band being backed by a record label before it had any natural hype surrounding it. The label was able to push the band on the public, but the band wasn't ready for it. This resulted in a massive debacle that almost saw Brinsley Schwartz laughed out of the industry before making it big. Just as British record labels were trying to make Brinsley Schwartz into the next big arena rock export from the UK, a little band called Eggs Over Easy was fooling around in a small British town looking for a small place to play a gig. In order to make Brinsley Schwartz famous, record execs sent the band to America and secured it an opening gig at a notable New York venue. The gig went disastrously, and the members of the band went home with their tails tucked between their legs. Meanwhile, Eggs Over Easy was an American export that was simply trying to kill some time and practice music while overseas. Compared to Brinsley Schwartz, Eggs Over Easy was a band that knew what it was doing. While staying in the UK, they took up residency at a pub called the Tally Ho. Eggs Over Easy started a great deal of success playing their back-to-basics brand of rock and roll and were soon given a residency at the pub. They became a huge sensation, and this was the birth of pub rock. Eggs Over Easy began playing at the Tally Ho in early 1971. By the time 1972 came around, the band was ready to move on. Once they decided they no longer wanted to keep that residency, the pub needed a new rock band. Enter Brinsley Schwartz the members of which had become aware of the new fad known as pub rock and believed that the new genre may be their chance to gain back some credibility after the debacle overseas. They found a good deal of success, and this showed the world that pub rock was here to stay. Though the American rock group Eggs Over Easy technically started the phenomenon, it was Brinsley Schwartz that became the first notable example of a pub rock band that hailed from the UK. Bees Make Honey Another notable and early example of a pub rock band in the UK was Bees Make Honey. They'd been around for about a decade by the time Eggs Over Easy introduced the genre of pub rock to Britain. But like other bands that would rise to success during the pub rock wave, they played a different type of music entirely before settling firmly in the burgeoning genre. When they first came about in the 60s, Bees Make Honey made Jump Jive music, a type of rock and roll centric R&B popularized by people like Elvis Presley. Bees Make Honey had an incredible amount of experience as a live band, even if they'd never found all that much success. It was that experience that made them stand out by the time pub rock became a thing. Whereas many of the bands that defined the first British invasion, like the Beatles, made most of their popular work in the studio, pub rock bands were groups that were most at home on stage. They were all about live performances. Even before Brinsley Schwartz, Bees Make Honey was the first ever band to take over for Eggs Over Easy. After that, group said goodbye to their place at the Tally Ho. The Electric Bluebirds The Electric Bluebirds is notable for being a band that actually started up after the invention of pub rock. Because of this, they were a pub rock band from conception. Despite this fact, the band was made up of musicians that had plenty of experience in prior music scenes. They had former members of groups like the Fabulous Poodles and the Realists. Not only that, but the group was also on friendly terms with both Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits and Glenn Tilbrook of Squeeze. They had a pretty big sound. The band had its own accordionist, who added quite a bit of flavor to its otherwise back-to-basic sound. This was a man named Alan Dunn, who later worked with Van Morrison. The Electric Bluebirds were also a huge influence on Mumford & Sons. Nine Below Zero When pub rock became a big thing in the UK, there were a number of underground bands from varying genres that changed their name and decided to try to find success with this new fad. Prior to 1979, Dennis Greaves was the vocalist and lead guitarist for a band called Stan's Blues Band. By 1979, he decided he'd rather be a pub rock musician, so he founded Nine Below Zero. It was named after the song of the same name by Sonny Boy Williamson II. The band rose to prominence with the album Live at the Marquee. Eddie and the Hot Rods 
While a majority of bands that defined the pub rock movement came from the blues scene, Eddie and the Hot Rods was a pub rock band that came from the punk scene. Because of this, they brought a decidedly different flavor, including some especially raucous live shows. Another thing that set this band apart from many contemporaries was its mascot, Eddie. Ace Ace was another band that had a very different sound than its pub rock contemporaries. Whereas Eddie and the Hot Rods were rooted in punk, Ace was rooted in smooth R&B. Their decidedly smooth sound allowed them to find crossover success with the song How Long. Notably, the band featured future Squeeze member Paul Carrick, who also went on to work with Eric Clapton. Mickey Jupp Though most of the musical acts that rose to prominence during the birth of the pub rock movement were bands, Mickey Jupp was a solo artist that found a great deal of success in the scene. Though Mickey released his own material, he's also notable for writing songs that were recorded by other pub rock musicians. The songwriter's defining work is arguably Switchboard Susan. Musician Nick Lowe performed the song on his album, Labor of Lust. Kilburn and the High Roads Kilburn and the High Roads was a pub rock band that was named after Kilburn High Road. Kilburn High Road is a street in North London, and it was home to many of the defining pubs of the pub rock movement. As the band's name suggests, Kilburn and the High Roads was an integral part of the scene. Ian Dury, who was previously a punk, started and led the band. Ducks Deluxe Standing alongside Eggs Over Easy, Brinsley Schwartz, and Bees Make Honey, Ducks Deluxe was one of the earliest and most definitive of the notable pub rock bands. The band was actually made up of some crew members who had worked with Brinsley Schwartz. Like that band, Ducks Deluxe found most of its success at the Tally Ho. Dr. Feelgood Finally, let's take a look at Dr. Feelgood. Though Eggs Over Easy was the band that started the pub rock movement and Brinsley Schwartz was the first notable British band to partake in it, Dr. Feelgood is the band that most people consider the most definitive pub rock group. The band had a lot of talent at its disposal, including the vocals of lead singer Lee Brillo and the instrumentalist chops of guitarist Wilco Johnson. Wilco found an unlikely admirer in the Who's Roger Daltrey, and the two went on to make a Dr. Feelgood cover album together called Gong Back Home. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favorite pub rock band? Let us know in the comments section below.